Well, happy Easter. I love Easter. How many of you love Easter? Now, if you're a guest with us today and, and, and maybe you have or have not ever heard the Easter story. Many people in America have heard the Easter story. I'm not talking about the bunny story. Actually, I don't even know. Is there an Easter bunny story or just an Easter bunny? I, if there's an Easter bunny story, I don't know the Easter bunny story, but, but I do, you know, I've heard of the Easter bunny, but not the fake one, the real one, the one with Jesus in it. If you've ever, maybe, maybe you've been to a, a passion play or, or, or you've been to a church production where they did a dramatic presentation about this story. I don't know about you, but I grew up that way. I grew up going to those. As a matter of fact, not only did I grow up going to them, my grandfather was a Baptist pastor for 50 years. I grew, I grew up being in those. And the highlight of my dramatic career was when my mother wrote a play for Easter called A Man Called Jesus. And it was from a storekeeper's perspective, the storekeeper who sold the three rusty nails that crucified Jesus. I don't know why they had to be rusty, but they were rusty. They had to be rusty. And so I was the storekeeper. And, and the highlight of the show was when I sang, believe it or not. <laughs> I sang, he looked beyond my fault and saw my need to the tune of Oh Danny Boy. It was a showstopper, guys. I mean, it was amazing. So, so I grew up, I digress, but I grew up around passion plays and Easter productions. But maybe you didn't. Maybe that wasn't your story. Maybe you never really heard the full story. Either way, I trust today that there will be some things that help you connect the dots. If you did ever hear the story at some point, maybe bits and pieces and fragments of it, you come to this point where you, you, you kind of know the, the narrative maybe. Maybe you've heard the, the, different, the different players in the story. You've got people like Judas betraying Jesus with a kiss, and you've got the Last Supper, and you've got the Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus sweating blood. And then you move forward and you, you come to the Roman government and the Roman governor, a guy named Pilate. All of this is found in Mark chapter 15, verse 1 through 15 is one of the better places to pick it up. And if you wanted to look at that on your own, you certainly could do that. Mark 15, 1 through 15. But, but here's the thing. In that story, at some point you come to where Pilate... The, 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 the Roman governor has an option. He has a choice. There was a custom that they could let go of a criminal on Passover week. So there was this guy named Barabbas. He's not usually one of the forefront characters in the narrative, but at some point you get introduced to this guy. Barabbas was a murderer. He had killed people in the rebellion or the attempted rebellion against Rome. He's a bad dude. He's on death row. I don't know if you've ever seen a man on death row, but I have. I've been to Angola prison, one of the worst prisons in America, and I've, I've walked down death row, and there's something really creepy and eerie about looking into the eyes of a man condemned to death. There's actually no experience quite like it. Here, this guy, Barabbas, was, was right there. He was, he was hours from execution. His fate was sealed, surely. Pilate thinking the, Jew, the Jewish religious leaders, because you had the government of Rome and the Jewish religious leaders, surely they're just jealous of Jesus, but Jesus is a folk hero. He had started a grassroots movement that was changing the world. And so Pilate thought, the man is innocent and surely, surely, surely they'll pick Jesus to be set free and Barabbas to die. But then an amazing plot twist happens in the story. 
The same crowd that last week on Palm Sunday, we call it, put palm leaves on the ground and they, 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 they cried Hosanna. The same people that cried Hosanna cried crucify him for Jesus. They want Barabbas to be set free. And, Je- and Pilate says, what did this man Jesus do? I find no fault in him. And they said, crucify him. He said, why? And they got more rowdy. Crucify him. They turned him from a hero to a villain in an instant. He was innocent. He had done nothing wrong. Why would they do it? Whenever I would watch that, Pastor Bob, as a kid, and I would go to church and see that part of the narrative, I would get mad. I would get mad at the people who were so stupid as to crucify an innocent man. And I felt like, what is the deal? Why would they do this? Why would they turn on him? I have a video I want us to play that's sort of a spoken word, if you're familiar with that genre. From a guy named Judah Smith. And in this few-minute video, he picks this part of the story up. And and if you've never heard this before, I wanted to set the stage so that you knew what he was doing. He talks very quickly, so, so you have to follow along very, very quickly as he talks. If you've heard it before, I want you to listen carefully. I don't think anybody can do this any better than Judah Smith does it right here. And if you've heard this story before, listen, because maybe... Just maybe you'll hear it in a way you've not heard it before. We see the story of Jesus going to the cross and everything seems to kind of be hand in hand. And then there's this one character that seems to interrupt the narrative. His name's Barabbas. We don't even know much about him except that he's a murderer, a leader of an insurrection, a rebel. And... Why he's even mentioned, sometimes I'm not so sure. It's like, what? Let's, this is about Jesus going to the cross. So in this moment, Pilate thinks, I hold the destinies of these two men in my hand. I know the Jews have a tradition that on a holy day, I will release one of the prisoners on death row. Pilate stands on this audacious stage who now presents Jesus, son of the living God, versus Barabbas, the thug and rebel. He says, all right, who do you want? This is blasphemy. This is, this has gone too far. There's no comparison. This is a rightful prisoner, a man who should be on death row. He's a rebel against Rome. He leads a, a rebellion. He murders people. He's a bad man. He's a thug and he's a crook. He deserves the chains and he deserves the crucifixion. Jesus, what has he done but heal, restore, deliver, set free, open blind eyes, open deaf ears, heal the lame and the leper? What what has Jesus done? Who do you want? We we want Barabbas. Yeah, give us Barabbas. They give us Barabbas. The Roman soldiers come up and they put the key in and they unlock Barabbas from his chains and shackles and he walks down the platform, welcomed by all of his thug friends. Yeah, the people love me. Yeah, that's right. I don't even know who this Jesus guy is, but all I know is my people love me. There seems to be no conscience of Barabbas. There's no record of him turning to Jesus and saying, I owe you everything now, for you have set me free. No, I don't see any of that in Barabbas. God knew that. Jesus stood there, silent, for he knew the will of the Father. He said, it's fine, Father. Let him have Barabbas. For Jesus knew that the Father would have to treat Jesus like Barabbas so he could treat Barabbas like Jesus. Barabbas thought it was the people that set him free. No, 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 no. It was the love of the Heavenly Father. That's us. And I thought I 
was reading this the other day, and I felt God speak to me. I love Barabbas. I love him. But God, he's a bad man. I love him. And I wanted him to go free. But didn't you know that he probably would have never acknowledged the free kid? Yeah, but I love Barabbas. For while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God sent his son for Barabbas. Even the one he knew would walk away from Jesus and his free gift and never come back. He loves them. And the nerve, the call, and the audacity of believers to think, I got saved by grace, but now that I'm in this deep, dark place of bondage, I better work hard to get myself out. What? That's the opposite of the gospel. Are you bound? Are you held under the power of this temptation, this sin? Do you feel like it's controlling you? What are you going to do? I'm going to shake myself free. Stop it! No, you won't! You're no match for the powers of hell and the urges of sin. You will not overcome it and you will never overcome it. You'll just be another statistic. There's no answer within yourself. Your own marriage, your own goodness, your own discipline, your own devotion will not save your marriage and will not save your kids. There's only one. And he's the one that took your place. He's the one that stood silently on the platform with Pilate and said, yes, let him have Barabbas. Take me. How many times have I stood on that platform with Pilate and Jesus and I'm the Barabbas? And they start to take my chains off. And I say, no, no, I deserve this. I deserve the guilt. I deserve the shame. I deserve the consequence. I deserve it. Jesus seems to look at me and say, no, son. Let me have it. Let me have your sin. Let me have your pain. No, God, I did it to myself. I deserve it. My marriage won't make it. This is what I deserve. I deserve divorce. I deserve poverty. I deserve sickness. I deserve it all. No! God, I, I'm so ashamed. Give me your shame. But God, what if I do it again? I'll still be here. Oh, God, I don't want to hurt you. I love you. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Give me your sins, son. This is all we got. It's all I got. It's all you got. We can play games. We can play church games. We can pretend like some people are better than others, and that's why they're blessed. Or we can all come to the honest conclusion that it's God. And it's God alone. The greatest challenge is not your discipline, your devotion, your focus. Your greatest challenge is believe in the gospel. Could it be that there's a God with a love so scandalous, so wide, so deep, so vast, so high, so expansive, so welcoming, so inclusive? Let me have your sin, son. Okay. And I give him my sin. Let's stand in this empty space of forgiveness and acceptance while Jesus walks off to the cross that I deserve. I see him, I see him walking to the post to be whipped. As I stand a free man, all the attention is turned now. And I feel the love of God saying, Go, son, live your life. I'll pay the price. Where did we get off thinking that we were going to set ourselves free? It's still Jesus. It'll always be Jesus. It'll never stop being the power of Jesus. If his blood is sufficient for your salvation, his blood is sufficient to sustain you through every challenge and every sin and every temptation. Jesus is enough.
Jesus is enough. He's enough. What a powerful statement. Jesus is enough. There are many incredible one-liners in this in this spoken word, but my personal favorite is where he said Jesus knew that the Father would have to treat Jesus like Barabbas so that he could treat Barabbas like Jesus. Jesus being fully God and fully man, he got the deal. He understood. He knew what was coming. He knew in Gethsemane. He knew it his whole life being raised because the Father told him what was going to happen. Barabbas, he goes on and says, Barabbas thought the people set him free. No, 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 no. It was not the people who set him free. It was the love. The love of a heavenly Father. You see today, the story of Easter is a story of love. It's the greatest love story ever told. It's a love that is hard to be described with human words. Spanish and English and Swahili and Chinese do not have words that, that are adequate. So we use words like unfathomable love, furious love, fierce love, outrageous love. But my favorite is scandalous. Because that's exactly what it was. It was a love that shocked the world. greatest love story. It's greater than, than Dr. Zhivago, Sense and Sensibility, Weathering Heights, Casablanca, all of them, Romeo and Juliet, all put together. But this love story is not the love between a man and a woman because those pale in comparison. This is the love of a father. A good, good, loving father and his son. See, immediately if you've heard the story, you think, yes, his son, Jesus. No, 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 no. His son, Barabbas. You say, but wait a minute, Pastor Dwayne, what are you talking about? How was Barabbas his son? Barabbas was a murderer. Barabbas was a, was a thief. He was a, he was a rebellion. He was a part of a rebellion. How was he God's son? As I was studying and I was typing this John and Lisa, every time I would type in Barabbas, I would misspell it. I kept trying to spell check, change it to Barbados. Barabbas became Barbados. But I would spell it B-A-R-R-A-B-B-A-S and it'd be wrong. And then I, I would go back and forth and finally I broke it down. B-A-R-A-B-B-A-S. And my limited knowledge of Greek and Hebrew, all of a sudden Aramaic, it comes to me, Joey. Barabbas is two words put together. Bar. Bar means son. Son of. And as I studied it a little deeper, bar not only means son, it comes from the Hebrew word bar is clean and pure. Michael, Barabbas was clean and pure. God named him my son, clean and pure, before he ever was lived a day and sinned. The day he was born, he's called Clean and pure. Abba, we all know, means daddy. Father. So literally, his name is son. Clean and pure son of his father. So see, the plot twist is this. It's not that they let Barabbas go. It's that God wanted him set free because before he ever sinned, God named him not because of his history, but because of his destiny. And I am Barabbas. Barabbas was the son that the father lost and wanted back. And you and I are the son and daughter that God lost and wanted back. You're Barabbas. I'm Barabbas. We are Barabbas. Romans 5.8 says it this way, but God demonstrated his own love towards us 
that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were Barabbas, Christ died for us. You could say it this way. While we were at our worst, the Father, through Jesus, gave his best. While Barabbas was at his worst, the Father paid a dear price to get him back. See, the Father loved Barabbas. Jesus loved Barabbas. And he thought he had great worth. How was he going to buy him back? What was the currency that he would use? He could have used anything, Joey. He could have used silver and gold. He could have used in the currency of the day. He could, have, he could have spared no expense naturally. But those things would have paled in comparison. He didn't use a natural thing to purchase him. He used He spilled his very own blood because of the worth, because of the value, the most precious thing he could have. Not only his, but the blood of his only begotten son. I don't know about you, but when I think of the value, the worth he placed on me, I'm amazed. See, in this love story, he thought you were to die for. What a great love story. But the greatest part of our love story is not that Jesus died. If he died, it's like Romeo and Juliet. If he died and stayed dead, if that was the end of the story, if our story ended on Friday, then it's a great story but it has no power to change my life, what we just sang. If somebody dies for you, no greater love has any man than this, and he lay his life down for his friends, and Jesus did that, but that displayed his love, but the power wasn't in just his death. The power was what happened between Friday and Sunday. Easter is not about Friday. Easter is about Sunday. You say, what do you mean? In that time, Jesus conquered death. He not only died, he conquered death, he conquered hell, and he conquered the grave. God did not leave him dead. And that's the only difference between Christianity and every other religion. Islam even says Jesus was a prophet, but then they try to say he didn't raise from the dead. That's impossible because Jesus was a prophet that said on the third day I'll rise from the dead. And a prophet has to speak the truth. So either Jesus was a liar and a con artist or he was raised from the dead. There are 500 people accounted in history. Many of them were not his followers that saw him raised from the dead. If you don't understand that, go see the movie, The Case for Christ. It will help you. People say you're weak-minded if you believe in Jesus. No, actually you're weak-minded. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to offend you. But if you don't, because he's a historical fact. The New Testament has been recorded, written, 5,000, over 5,300 documents of, 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 of the, the New Testament. Homer's Iliad only has about 1,000 or 1,500. So there's, if you believe that the Bible is illegitimate, then you can't believe in the Iliad. It must be illegitimate because there's less proof of that document than the New Testament. So Jesus not only died, but he raised from the dead. Now remember, 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 remember. The Father treated Jesus like Barabbas. So that he could treat Barabbas like Jesus. So now watch this. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 13. 
reading the message. We're going to read it out of the message. When you were stuck in your old sin dead life, when you were Barabbas, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive right along with Christ. Think of it. All the sins forgiven. The slate wiped clean that old arrest warrant. Because seeing you deserve death row. You say, I never murdered anybody. I was not as bad as him. But everybody has sinned. Everybody's fallen short. And once we agreed with one sin, we agreed with them all. But he said that old arrest warrant canceled, nailed to Christ's cross. But then watch this. Here's the key in verse 15. And he stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross. And he marched them naked through the streets. What streets? The streets of hell. You say, Pastor Dwayne, what are you saying? I'm saying this. That Jesus, come here, Cody, come here. Jesus, depending on the translation you read, it says that he triumphed over the enemy, principalities and powers, the devil and his demons. And so when he died on the cross, he went into hell and he stripped the devil of the keys of the authority of the earth. The devil had the keys to death, hell, and the grave. But Jesus said, no, because of my death, I'm going to take those back. So he took the keys away from him. And now Jesus holds the key to life and death in his hands. He has all authority. And he, he literally did what they would do to a king. He stripped him down naked. He grabbed him by the head of the hair and he marched him through downtown hell. And he said, I have defeated you. I have shamed you. You are no longer powerful, but you are powerless. And then on the third day, the stone was rolled away. And Jesus raised from the dead. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And he has all power and all authority. And the devil cannot win. for Sunday Friday was a great love story but Sunday is where the power is and that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead can live in you how simple it's the way I'm not good enough you don't have to be Jesus was Dwayne, I blew it. I know. So does the Father. Dwayne, I, I did bad stuff last night. So did Barabbas. All you got to do is believe and receive. So what are you talking about? Well, John 1, 12 says, As many as received him to them, Gave he power or the right to become the children of God to those who believe in his name. It's three key words. First, believe. Just believe. Do you believe today? Maybe you've never believed before, but will you believe today? Maybe somebody drug you here and you didn't believe. Maybe you came to win a Nintendo Switch. But God wanted to switch your old life for a new one. It's a lot better than that Switch. Can you believe? Then once you believe, all you got to do is receive. It's simple. Just receive. Receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. 
Receive him as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that he has received him as your personal, personal Savior. Receive the price he paid, his blood, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Believe plus receive equals become. If you believe and you receive, shall become the son.